So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to discuss something which we have not discussed much in exotic astrology, but as time is passing by, I am seeing the importance of this horoscope more and more and more. There are some videos in YouTube for this, but not many, especially on this topic, D60, that is Shashtiamsha chart. So I will not go into the details of what are divisional charts, what is Navamsha, Shashtiamsha. So if you have not watched my videos on divisional charts, then uh, please watch them. You will find them, uh, how, how, how to know which is your which one is your divisional chart, for which area of life. So you, you will find that in my channel. So please watch them. But today's topic is on D60. What is D60? It's known as the Shashti Amsha chart because, again, should we discuss the technicals or leave it for some other day? So in essence, what is the D60 chart? In essence, the D60 chart is the chart of our karma, basically. Now you may think, oh, well, then uh, what is what is D1? What is D9? Right? Do they not represent karma? Does it mean whatever is there in the D60 only that happens? Well, absolutely not. Because there are different types of karma. There are different levels of karma actually. Okay, And we, I've also discussed this in other videos. Uh, you can see them. You can type exotic astrology types of karma. You will find it. And as usual, if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. If, and if you like this video, please click the thumbs up at the end. And if you want a consultation from me, my website will be down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him in every divisional chart. So there are, there are different types of karma. So one is known as Prarabdha karma. So before Prarabdha, you have to understand what is Sanchit Karma. Sanchit Karma is basically the karma and the results of your activities from many, 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 many lifetimes. Okay. Uh, but then there is something called as Prarabdha Karma. So Prarabdha Karma is like when you are making a roti or puri or chapati or paratha or whatever you say. So you make a dough first. So that dough is like the entire karma of your past lifetimes that is like the sanchit karma from millions and billions and trillions and unlimited number of lifetimes the activities that we are doing in this material world they are represented by uh, the sanchit karma then we cannot accept or we cannot uh, experience all the karma in one lifetime it is not possible so then, depending on our karma and depending on various other factors and like uh, what are our inclinations, we get a particular set of karma from that big set of uh, Sanchit karma for this particular lifetime, which is known as Prarabdha karma, which is like, uh, it is fixed actually. And then... Uh, we, after Prarabdha Karma, there is something called as Kriyamana Karma. Kriyamana Karma means, Kriyamana Karma is basically our free will. Free will means, uh, so Prarabdha is saying something will happen. So for example, Prarabdha is saying, okay, you lose your job, for example. So that is something which is destined. That's why it's called Prarabdha, which means we can't change it. But then now, you have Kriyamana Karma. What is Kriyamana Karma? Kriyamana Karma tells us, Okay, you are fired, but what do you do now? Do you start earning money by devious means or do you just uh, earn money through righteous means? Okay, so what is that which you uh, resort to? Where do you go when there is downfall or even if things are very good, then do you start becoming arrogant and you like blast or you keep insulting others always? So that's what Kriyamana Karma is. So depending on your Kriyamana Karma, you are creating more karma which is getting added to your Sanchit Karma and can also go to the Prarabdha, of course. Okay. But the thing is, Lord Krishna says in the Gita, like uh, Gahana Karma no Gati, which is like law of karma is very complex. It's very complicated. Okay. Now, if Krishna is saying it's complex, it means it is beyond comprehension for us. 
that's the short meaning of krishna saying it's complex so this essentially means we should not waste too much time thinking oh what i did in my past lifetimes why is this karma coming to me why, why is that karma coming uh, like people keep asking me all the time can you tell me who i was in my past lifetime so there's an intrinsic assumption that they had only one past lifetime but uh, what if uh, it, it is possible that what you are experiencing now you may be you might have done something in you know, 900th lifetime before okay so or 1 million 10050 whatever lifetime before that that's what is possible so we should not waste much time uh, debating discussing arguing or trying to find out what karma have we did it's like you got malaria but now instead of curing uh, the malaria you are more interested in which mosquito bit you actually eh? the problem with this approach is even if you find out will it make a difference well not much right because now the main job is to clear the malaria it's like a person who was in a ship but now he's drowning and then the lifeboat people comes to save him and then he says no no first tell me how i uh, how how did i uh, start drowning only then i will take your help only then i will get into the sh- get on the ship again right so that's nonsensical and that's foolishness because that's not going to help you at that moment okay okay first uh, we come out of the situation and then we understand first we learn how to tackle it okay so therefore the lagna chart and the navamsha chart they actually tell us about our prarabdha which means things that are destined for this lifetime which we have no control over which we can't change and then the sastiamsha chart they the sastiamsha gives us an indication about our <clears throat> collective karma which is the sanchit karma now of course does it literally show sanchit karma or not that that is a bit debatable but what essentially it shows that uh, it is something which we are we are from multiple lifetimes okay there is no dasha in the sastiyam i mean there could be some dasha system in some uh, system of jyotish I, i i i don't know but what i'm trying to tell here is sastiyam is not time bound it is it's like our super dna not the dna from this life experience it is like the super dna you know from from we ourselves so our mindset our actions you know that actually is the sastiyamsha chart and then the sastiyamsha is like who we are that's what is the dna so now what happens is the prarabdha comes from there so from there we get the d1 and then we have the d9 so then what happens is they will tell us to what extent are we going to experience certain things in life in this life especially because when we are talking of d1 d9 we are talking of this life okay and the d1 and the d9 can show that uh, from the sastiyamsha what are some of the skill sets that we have which we we can use in this life what are some of the talents that we might have cultivated sometime somewhere and we are able to use them now okay that is why they say a planet in trines of navamsha is like the blessings of god because now you are blessed to use that in this life okay <clears throat> and of course then we have the lagna chart which tells us about our external events you know what will happen in life so this means that first we see uh, the lagna chart so for example let me give a very uh, easy example to understand imagine a person has a planet in the 10th house in the lagna chart okay and then this planet which is in the 10th house of your d1 is well placed in the d9 so this means the person will get name fame because of the placement in d1 but because it is coming from because it is also well placed in the d9 so it means um, this name fame will not be temporary this name fame not necessarily it will be permanent 100% always but it is it is going to be there with the with the person for a significant amount of time 
Why? Because the person is using some of the experiences and talents from his previous lifetimes in this lifetime, in that particular area of life. And then that thing in the Lagna chart, because it is in the 10th house, it's making him famous. It's as simple as that. But now, if this planet is uh, badly placed in the Sasti Amsha, okay, now this is a very tricky situation. Then, this what this can mean? This now, will you say, oh, Navamsha is saying good, Sasti Amsha is saying bad. So, does it mean it will cancel out? That's what uh, people do and astrologers do, right? Something is good somewhere, something is bad somewhere, like people say. Oh, uh, Venus is in uh, fourth house uh, in Digbal, but why it didn't give me good things in life? Then they will say, oh, actually, you know, uh, it was in enemy sign, it was in debility, that's why it didn't give you. So, the goodness of the Digbal is cancelled by the uh, badness of the debility. <laughs> but that's not how astrology works. So, if a planet is badly placed in the Sasti Amsha, then it can mean that we, we have uh, we have used perpetually those traits in a negative way and we are competent in a negative way. Okay, Negative way means uh, something which cannot give us fulfillment in the long run. So for example, uh, if you if uh, planets like Jupiter is uh, badly placed in the Sasti Amsha, Jupiter or Venus, you know, then it can show that uh, you might have, you know, had a struggle, especially if Jupiter here is badly placed because Jupiter is the primary karaka for, you know, marriage, children and all this, you know, family and your lineage and all this. So if Jupiter is badly placed, then it can mean that you have not maintained your family well. And you know. <clears throat> But now what's happening, that expertise of being responsible in the family is coming through the Navamsha and... <clears throat> Then it goes to 10th house, suppose, and it goes into your Lagna chart. So then it can mean that whenever you are getting some uh, name, fame or post position, then you are even neglecting your family more. And because it is well placed in the Navamsha, which means you feel it's okay because that's how you have been in the Sasti Amsha, right? Uh, being bad with this planet. Okay, so... There are different things. So, if for example, if sun is badly placed in Sasti Amsha, it can show that you might have a tendency to misuse authority. And then if the D1 and D9 shows that your sun is good, then you are very happy misusing authority and you are getting a lot of name fame by misusing authority, right? <laughs> but uh, the, the, the problem with this is because you are creating bad karma again, then you are creating Kriya Manaka, like through Kriya Manaka, which is, you know, dynamically you are using your free will to do wrong activities again. So then that will further uh, corrupt the Sanchit Karma. And in next lifetime, you know, the Prarabdha will also not be very nice. So therefore, see what is going on in your Sasti Amsha chart. And Sasti Amsha can change depending on which Ayan Amsha you take. So you have to be very careful with that. Okay. So whenever you do birth time rectification, uh, you should always use the D1, D9 and the D60 chart because they will tell you what is going on. If a person has a lot of crookedness in some area of life, then it can be possible. And if that person is getting a lot of name fame because of that uh, planet, then it can be possible that it is well placed in D1. But... Uh, it is not so well placed in the Sasti Amsha chart. Okay. So you, you got to see, you know, you, you can't just say, oh, this planet is nice here. Like sometimes people ask me, you know, oh, my Venus is good in D1, bad in D9. What will happen? Will I get divorced or will I remain unmarried? So or the other way around this, you know, Venus is good in the D9 and bad in the D1. What will happen? What if Venus is debilitated, you know? All the astrology channels, all the comments in all the videos, they are filled with this two words. What if? What if Venus is exalted but debilitated in here, there? <laughs> so that, 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 that's very important that we do a comprehensive analysis and we try to see what is going on. Because 
at the end of the day you are a full complete wholesome individual which is a combination of all divisional charts, all dashas, all transits, all placements, all ashtagvarga. So everything matters. You know, shatbal also matters. So if you just ask, you know, oh, Venus is exalted in D1, but, you know, debilitated in this chart, what will happen? Well, there are so many things which can happen because there are like other, at least 15 parameters in astrology which we don't know, right? So unless we know everything, how can we suggest something? And even if you suggest, then your predictions will fail and you will create a bad name for astrology and astrologers, okay? So do not do that. Uh, stop behaving as if one planet decides everything. No, it doesn't. So that will be all from my side regarding the Sasti Amsha chart. Please see your D1, D9 and then see your D60 chart. Okay. Thank you very much. Once again, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't for consultations, the website is down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him at least somewhere, somewhere in some divisional chart at least. Thank you.